Good morning traders and welcome to Tuesday the 12th of July morning update presented by Mark Owen and today we're just going to have a quick focus on the major news that's happening today uh, which in all honesty it's going to be on Mark Carney the governor of the Bank of England uh, what is he expected to do well I think the first thing that will be likely to take place will be cutting interest rates maybe by 25 basis points followed by some quantitative easing now the question is Will he do quantitative easing first? Will he get straight in, will he get straight into some sort of stimulus package? Or is it just going to be let's start with a interest rate cut and see what happens from there? Uh, we should have some stability now coming into the UK now. We've got a new lady uh in charge. Good luck to Theresa May. I'm sure she's gonna do a fantastic job. I wouldn't want to be in her shoes though right now with the, with the country in the position that we're in. Uh then obviously the next uh, major talking points will be the FOMC members' speeches. There, we do have FOMC later on. Uh, we've got a, a little bit of, um, let's say, lack of direction coming from the dollar at the moment. It started to move quite buoyant yesterday, only for a, a pullback. Now, the major movers this week are the Nikkei and the Japanese yen. We had the, the governor, uh, Mr. Abe, win by a majority vote by over two-thirds, something we don't really know about here. Uh, majority votes are always too close to call. So anyway, what's happened? Well, I don't know if you remember, but we've been looking at the Nikkei for quite a period of time, and we were saying that in and around the low 15s, it was definitely a good point for buying. Uh, now, what we were looking for, essentially, was we were looking for uh, the NFP numbers, etc., to bring the Nikkei down. Uh, potentially, we're looking for something where we could say, right, we'd like to see the Nikkei come down, touch 15,000 again, just down here. It just didn't quite come down. And then only to see that the, the vote happened over the weekend. Arbe got in. Uh, they're obviously producing some sort of uh, intervention on the back of this because obviously now it's it's been taken as a good sign. He's going to increase stimulus. And we see an ultimate... Uh, a move in the Nikkei of over sort of, what is it, about 1,200 points before we start seeing a little pullback uh, from last night. Well, look, the market's come up into a decent respected area, this long-term trend line, which we've seen it break through once and then pull back uh, the following day. Now, we've got a couple of trading opportunities, what we can look at. I think what we'll see is when we look at this and cross-reference it with the Japanese yen, there's going to you'll be able to see that one will lead the other and we will be able to get a trading opportunity from one of these two markets. So <clears throat> first things first, if you're going to be the aggressive trader then we'll probably look for a pullback into about 15900. Okay, this support level here, it's going to be a very aggressive trade somewhere around this neckline, somewhere between let's say 15750 actually, 15750. I'll, I'll be I'll be looking at this zone here. The 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 open of this candle and the close of this one and the tip of the wick in the middle. So at 15,750 to 15,800, look for a pullback into there with an aggressive entry. Um, we can have our stops at uh, pretty much break even or we can have a risk-free trade by taking profit off the table. And then what we'll look for is ultimately a break of this trend line and a break of 16,255. And when I say a break, I mean a close above. We get that, then we can use this particular zone for a continued assault on a rally with the Nikkei. Now, how, how does this compare with the Japanese yen? So if we look at dollar yen, we can see that the market came right down into our buy zone. Now, <clears throat> again, if you've been watching all our videos, you'll have noticed and you'll have heard us say a few times over coming weeks, we're looking for intervention play. We're looking for a long-term carry trade here on the dollar yen. We were having entries at 101, 199 with stops below 98.50. Now with NFP, we obviously we can't forecast the numbers. We did expect better than uh, expected numbers, but the issue is that's gambling. We don't gamble. So the market, I think, at the time on Friday was about 101.50, 10 uh, some, uh, or 10 170, something like that. Uh, but we didn't. We just didn't want to take the gamble. So what we did is we closed the 101 orders, and we left, uh, or I should say, I left the 100 order uh, and the 99. On the, on my large account, I closed the actual 100 order as well. So there was it was only on the smaller accounts that if it was going to do some damage, it wasn't going to be too painful. So I always like to be risk prepared. Um, well, the market came down. It touched 100.0. 
0.04. It missed my entry by half a pip in spread, only to see the market rally 330 pips. But this is what happens with trading. Okay, now if we look at where we are on this weekly chart of Japanese yen, we can see that 103.30 plays sort of a significant role in resistance. So what's going to happen? We've got this long-term horizontal. Now I'm going to flip down to a smaller time frame, the four hour. And I just want to show you this trend line that's in place. Now, here's our resistance that I was talking about, which is 103.30 to 103.50. And you can see the interaction with these lows here and this high here. So what we've got to think about is the yen is at resistance. The Nikkei is at resistance. <coughs> which one's going to give first? Are we going to see a pullback and a correction? And if we do, we might see something into maybe the 101.30s, 101.40s, forming an inverse head and shoulders somewhere through this area here or it's going to break through come to the upside and we'll look to use 103.30 to get long and our target as you know we've talked about it it's going to be 120 on this particular market okay so everyone following so far good <coughs> okay dollar index mixed result bit of chop it's going up and down we've seen no follow through after the numbers are on NFP whether it's because the, the employment, although it was big numbers, the kind of employment that it was, it wasn't particularly good employment. Uh, hourly earnings went down slightly. So the, we've not really seen that commitment, that follow through. So I think in order for us to see follow through and direction from the dollar, we're going to have to see the key level of 97 cleared above now. Otherwise, what we're going to see is we're going to see it operate within this trap between 96 and uh, 97 and 95. So that will mean looking at range plays on majors and minors. Or what we'll do is we'll look to trade other currencies that are actually having uh, some directional plays. Okay, so gold, this is a risk-off market. Now, I've highlighted on here cut signal short, cut signal long. There were some other cut signal shorts through here and here. Uh, but these are the last two most significant ones. Uh, we've been highlighting this now for maybe a week or two, looking to get short. We were short. NFP, um, we got triggered in, but then the market crashed down from, what did we enter, 13.65, I think it was, was my entry. Uh, the market crashed down to about 13.30. We were really in the money. It was looking fantastic. Moved my stops to break even. And the market spun round, stopped me out, break even. Unbelievable. Now, the signal was still valid. Everything was valid. Uh, all it meant was that Right, okay, I, I still believe in this signal, it's just NFP, the day always likes to swing around backwards and forwards. So it was a brilliant trade and I was up a good few percent. By the time I next look at the chart, I had got no money left in the account, i.e. The, that particular trade had got, had got stopped out at break even. So <clears throat> the market came back up into my sell zone, uh, I sold again, uh, 13.69. Market's moving pretty well again. We're 13.56. We've got just over a percent in, in profit, which is which is always nice. Um, but I'm looking for a bit more commitment, a bit more follow through, and I think we're going to have to wait and see what happens with the Fed speech. If we're going to see uh, the S&P keep creating new highs, if we're going to see more stimulus from the FTSE, then obviously we're going to see a bit of a risk on market, and that should affect gold. So we'd start to see the sell-off in gold. Now, I will be doing a video on cot signals. What What is a cot signal? What is cot? Okay, this is going to be an introductory video because this is what a lot of our training is based around. So I'm, I'm not obviously going to do a complete video on the Commitment of Traders report and how we teach it, but I will show you how it can benefit you and why we use it. Uh, if you will be interested in that, just drop us an email and I'll let you know when the webinar is going to be. Okay, so an email to mark at phoenixblue.co.uk and put commitment of traders and webinar, please, in the subject heading. And if you've got any other questions, please fire away. So soybeans, well, we're back in this trade again. We got uh, taken back out on Friday. We'd had a fantastic trade from up here, came down, we're making fantastic money. And then Friday, just before NFP, we closed all our positions, uh, protecting profits. So that came out, but then yesterday we got triggered back into soybeans, as you can see right here, uh, highlighting the double top neckline. Uh, we got in, stops, you can see, well away, and we'll be targeting somewhere down here. 
we, we don't actually have a target in place right now. This is a commitment of traders report uh, signal. We're looking to take this short and we're looking to run it as far as possible. Uh, but we will trade and we, we will manage this on a, a daily stroke weekly basis depending on how price reacts. Okay, final chart of the day is cotton. Again, we've got another cut signal short. Uh, so this is current here. Now we were looking at a, a, a rising wedge which it broke out of with this huge bullish candle. But now what you'll see is it's come right up into major resistance. So we're going to be looking at trading this uh, candle short today at the close of play depending on its structure. Okay, if it carries on going, then obviously this is going to be a failed signal and it's not something we're going to trade. But we'll be looking at taking this market short. Uh, initial targets, we'll be thinking of taking it down to the bottom of the channel. Now, next thing we'll look for is a break of this support level here. And then we'll look to trade it again short from a retest of that level somewhere down into these lows here. Okay, so that's it from all the charts today at Phoenix Blue. But remember, guys, you've only got a few days left to register for Trade with Phoenix Blue on the 19th of July. We are almost at capacity right now. If you would like to try and get into this event, it is on the 19th of July. It is in London. You do need to confirm your reservation, i.e., that means you need to email us and say you'd like to attend this event. And if you receive an email back, that means your seat has been confirmed. If you haven't, that means the event is full. So make sure you are quick in applying for your your seat it is a free event you can meet the traders of phoenix blue uh, you can see how we do things uh, and basically it's just gonna be a fun day where we're gonna play some trades and see what happens okay no different to any normal day of phoenix blue except the difference is you guys will be able to come and meet us and see if you'd like to become part of our family all right well listen have a great trading day and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning cheers bye bye